Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome to part two of this tutorial of the basics of cycles and the node editor. So, last part, we created this very basic cycles material where we mixed between a diffuse value or a diffuse shader, sorry, with uh, an image texture being applied to the color and a glossy shader by using a Fresnel value. Um, if that confused you at all and you had no idea what I was talking about, you should probably go and watch the second or the first part of this tutorial and get caught up. But where we left off, uh, we did, as I said before, and we have all these valleys over here. Now, if you waited from last tutorial to this tutorial, looking over here, you may not have any idea what's going on. And that's the problem with using this menu over here is very quickly, it gets very confusing and very messy. For example, if I wanted to say add a curve to this image texture, um, I'd have to add a curve value, RGB curves. I'd have to go, I'd have to add in an image texture if I can find that. Select our color again. Select generated as the value again. And then I could edit the curves. Just like that. And if I say had a bump map, uh, spec map, a reflection map, maybe ambient occlusion map, um, all these different images being plugged into a shader, it would get very confusing very fast and it would take forever to make any change because you'd have to spend forever looking through and finding which value needed to be changed. So in order to fix this, we have the node editor. Now if I drag up our timeline, because we're not going to need the timeline, and I change this to the node editor, and I go down here to the material view. This little tab um, is the animation nodes tab. It's an amazing add-on. I will cover it in another tutorial. You can see we have these basic nodes. Um, by the way, I'm using middle mouse to move around, scroll wheel to zoom in and out, uh, just like 3D view. Now, this may look a little confusing, but if I drag these out, just like this, you can see it's actually pretty simple. What it did is it added nodes that we have over here. So it's doing what we set up before. We have our Fresnel value that's mixing, uh, that's being plugged into the factor of the mix shader, that's mixing between diffuse and glossy, and then diffuse is taking our texture and running it through RGB curves and taking that as a color input. Um, very simple, and now you can get a sort of idea of how this works and how nodes work. But say we didn't want to do this. Um, so let's highlight this by hitting B and dragging it and hit X to delete those nerds. Oh, not, sorry, not nerds, nodes. Uh, and we're left with the orange texture that we set up last time. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Now say we want to do something cool, like, I don't know, if I hit Shift A and click on search, let's search for a Musgrave texture. Now if I plug this color into the color, you can see a Musgrave texture is a generated texture and it's sort of splotchy, sort of like ner uh, noise, but not quite. It's a little rounder, uh, a little more fluid. But let's run this through a color ramp. So I'm going to search for a color ramp. And I'm going to make some ripples. So I'm going to drag this like this, maybe drag this up a little bit. And then I'm going to add another one. I'm going to make this black. I'm going to make a ring just like that. I'm going to add another white one. I'm going to make this white. And then I'm going to add in another black one just like that. Now, if I were to take this and unplug it from the color and go over here to the material output and plug it into the, 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 the displacement, then you'll see it acts as sort of a bump map if I drag these out to reorganize them. But it's being applied very strongly, so we need to weaken the strength of this a little bit. So we're going to add in a math node. So I'm going to search for math. And instead of add, I'm going to change this to multiply. And I'm going to plug color into the top value, and then that value into the displacement. Now by default, it's multiplying it by half, so it's multiplying it by 0.5. Um, I'm going to set this to something a little smaller, like 0.2. And as you can see, now we have our bump, but it's coming out. 
Say we wanted it to go in instead, like cavities. So I'm going to add in an invert node, and I'm just going to drop that by hovering it over the little noodle, and I'm going to click. And that's going to drop it in there. And now it's going in. Um, actually, on second though, I'm going to add this to 0.3. And now we have this. So you're beginning to see the power of nodes. You can add, drop things in any time in the flow of the nodes and at any point and make changes. And you can also go back and easily follow where everything's being applied and the sort of like the chain of command and make changes without really searching too much for the thing you want to change. But this is only beginning to scratch the surface. So say we wanted the inside to be darker, uh, like sort of like ambient occlusion. The cool thing about nodes is you can link one output to multiple inputs. So, for example, if I wanted to plug, also use the color of the inverted color and use that instead of our orange, I could do that. And now it's being used as both a bump and a color map. So if I were to change the scale, it changes both of those. But let's do a little something else. Um, like I said, let's add an ambient occlusion effect to this orange. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to drop in an RGB node, and I'm going to click this little rectangle, and I'm going to eyedrop our orange, and then plug that color into diffuse. Now, all we've done is we've separated the color control from the diffuse, so it really didn't change anything. But what that allows us to do is, it adds us to drop in a mix RGB node, and mix between the RGB color, and our inverted color. So by default, this works as a mix. Uh, this works just like a mix shader, where this slider mixes between the two colors. However, if we were to change this to multiply, and drag this all the way up, you can see we get our effect where the darkness is being applied on the inside. And by sliding this factor value, we can change the intensity of that. But I want full intensity. Now, we set up a very simple note, well, not very simple, this would be more medium complexity, um, but you can sort of see the power of nodes. Um, like, I can go back and I can change the scale again, or I can change this color ramp, and we start to see that it changes both the color and the displacement. Um, because we're linking one output to multiple inputs. I hope this helps some of you and ho helped you understand how nodes can be used and how powerful it is. Um, and I want you to just go off and play around with it a little bit. And if you come up with any cool shaders, um, post them in a link below. And I will check them out because I'm really curious to see what you guys come up with. Um, as always, if you have an idea for a future tutorial, leave it in the comments below or send me a message. And I will see you next time. This chain's control my side. I'm taking time out to lose my power.